Hallelujah. The Lord Amen. is good. The Lord is good. At At all time. Time. Please, if you have your Bible with me, can you please help me read or recite the one of the most popular chapter in the Bible, Psalm 23. I want us to read Psalm 23 from verse 1 to the end. Let's say it together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall, I shall not, not want. want. He made me to lie down in green pasture. He lifts me to the still water. He restores my soul. He lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord and Father, we thank you. We worship you, ancient of days, because you are God, our good shepherd. There is no one to be compared to you. Father, we thank you. The Bible says, what manner of love is this for one to lay down his life for his friends? We appreciate you because you are a good shepherd and you have promised to be with us and we have chosen to be your sheep. Today, as we look into your word, the perfect law of liberty, come and minister life unto us. Help us, O oh Lord, my God, to behave as sheep as you expected us to be, that at the end, all glory shall be yours. Thank you for hearing us, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Uh, good morning, all. We have been talking on the series on the Lord, our good shepherd. I hope we are not tired of hearing this because the Lord is our good shepherd. If the Lord is not a shepherd, I don't know what you will be. Uh, you become vulnerable. The benefits that is associated of God being your shepherd may not be yours. I pray that will not be a portion. The Lord, our good shepherd. Last week, we look at from verse one to verse number six. And um, last week, we looked at verse number six, the A part of verse six, where we looked at uh, David's declaration of God. He's confident in God being his good shepherd. He was able to declare to himself by saying that surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell. That is the first part. And the second part of it talks about, he declared that I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. That, and today we're going to look on a subtopic on this series titled dwelling in the house of the lord dwelling in the house of the lord this is a declaration that was made by david he said i would dwell in the house of the lord all the days of my life forever and ever dwelling in the house of the lord what is dwelling you now we need to uh, define some key terms for us to understand what David meant by saying that he would dwell in the house of the Lord. Dwelling is a place of abode. You know, it's a place of abode. That is why you can hear some people, you can ask somebody, where is your dwelling place? You can ask somebody, where is your place of abode? Another word for dwelling is a residence. A dwelling is a residence where someone lives. Dwelling is a place where someone lives. It's a residence. You can ask somebody, I believe each and every one of us have a place we reside. We have a residence. We have a place we live in. And that is being referred to as our dwelling place. A place one lives, dwelling is not a place one visits. There is some, we know what dwelling is. There's also what a dwelling is not about. Dwelling is not a place where one visits. For instance, 
when you go to a hotel to lodge there temporarily, you are just a visitor. You cannot claim to, to, to leave or claim that a hotel is your dwelling place. When you visit a friend temporarily, you can't claim that that place is your dwelling place. You are just a visitor for the time being. So a dwelling is not a place one visits. A place one visits temporarily cannot be said to be that person's dwelling place. It's a place one visits. Just a good example of it is like a hotel or when you're a guest to a friend. But dwelling is a place of abode. The psalmist know, say that God's house, he made a declaration that he's going to dwell, he's going to reside, he's going to abide in God's house, not just momentarily, he said all the days of his life, all the days of his life. And when you're looking about the life of David, we need to understand what does it mean when he said that he's going to dwell in the house of the Lord. And I would like us to read the book of Psalm 27, verse 4. Well, let us see how this man is so desirous of dwelling in the house of God. In the book of Psalm 27, I will read verse number four. We can understand better what David meant that he's going to dwell in the house of the Lord. Because in Psalm 27 verse four, the same word of declaration that we saw in Psalm 23 verse six B is made also there. In Psalm 27 verse four, we read, this is David declaring. He said, one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple, and to inquire in his temple. We can see that David has made God his dwelling place. So dwell, his, his dwelling place. Dwelling place of God is a place of abode. It's, a, it's his house. It's a place that he longs for. For us to benefit, the, for us to yield the benefit of God being our good shepherd, the first thing we must do, we must make God our dwelling place. We must make him dwell, decide to dwell in his house, dwell in his house. You know, the house of God is something that we must be desirous of. That is why David says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. How gladdened are you when it is said, let us go to the house of God? Are you, do you feel that it's a burden? Are you always excited to be in the presence of God? The house of the Lord there also symbolizes the presence of God, where God is. And I need to explain some word because when somebody said, oh, if that is the case, the presence of God is in the house, is in the heart. I know my kinsmen used to say that fellowship or church is in the heart, but they got it wrong. I know it's in the heart. God visits us in the heart, but he still wants us to be in a place where his presence is. He also wants us to worship together. The Bible says in the book of um, Hebrews 10, verse 25, Hebrews 10, verse 25, he said, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, just as the manner of some is already, that we should be exhorting one another as much more seeing the day approaching. So we must not which must not think that it's just in the house, in the heart. It is obviously in the heart, but we must always be desirous. I want to, us to know that David wrote this psalm when he was away. He was a refugee. He was an exile. He was fugitive. He was running away from his life. He, he lost the opportunity of fellowshipping in the temple of God, in the house of the Lord. And he was so desirous. He was so desirous of the presence of God, the house of God. And in verse 27, in verse 4 of Psalm 27, 
He said one thing he desired, one thing he longed for. And he said that thing is that that also he seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. How are you, what are you longing after? What is your desire? For us to benefit from the benefit of God being our good shepherd, not only should we dwell in the house of the Lord, we must also desire to be in his presence. We must always desire to be in his presence. We must decide to be in his presence. We must desire to be in his presence. Just like Debbie said, he desired that thing. That is something, that is one thing that he always desired. That is one thing he desired. Not only desire, we should also seek after. He said, the third point here is that you must also seek after God. What is it that you are seeking after? What are you seeking after? The Bible says in Psalm 84, Psalm 84, is it verse 2? Psalm 84, verse 2. That is David again. Psalm 84, verse 2. He said, my soul longed, longeth, yes, even faints for the court of the Lord. Can you see how David is longing? He said, my soul longs for, my soul faints for the cause of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry it out to the living God. So you must be desirous. You must also seek to be in God's house, in God's dwelling place, in God's presence. That is what fills the life of David, we saw that he has decided, he has made it a, 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 a personal degree that he was going to dwell in the house of the Lord. Not only would he dwell, he made an effort. He said that he is desirous, he is, this is his longing, and he also seek after. The Bible says in Matthew 6 to 3 that we should seek you first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto. It is unfortunate that some of us always long to be in God's house only when we are in need, only when we are in danger. You know, David was not that kind of person that only wants to come to God's presence, God's house when he's in danger. You know, he cried out to God. He is longing to be in God's presence even outside when he was free, when he became king. He came back again to the house of the Lord. He was not found missing. Many of us, sometimes when God bless us in the times of trouble, just like David was in trouble at a point in his life, he made this declaration, he cried to God, he was longing, but when he became king, he was not missing in the house of the Lord. He was always there. He was always there. Sometimes we always give excuse of the blessing of God becoming an excuse for not being in God's presence. That should not be. That is not seen in the life of David. He was a king, and he even when he became a king, he was not found wanting. In fact, he contributed. He was part of the movement of the house of God. I don't know what you are desirous of. I don't know what you are seeking. But David said, one thing I desire, and one thing I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, not momentarily, not only the time that I, 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 I feel the need of needing him, uh, uh, need of God, not only when I'm in trouble, in danger, not only when I'm sick, not only the time that I feel depressed, but there is it all the days of my life. My brothers, my sisters, what are you desirous of? What are you seeking? For David, he said, this is one thing. He is not losing focus that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, dwelling in the house of the Lord. I pray that the blessing of the Lord will not be a hindrance from us being in his presence in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Another thing that we need to do if we must partake of the blessings of the good shepherd that we saw in the life of David is that we must also be planted in his house. 
what is what is not planted we must be rooted the book of psalm 92 verse 13 psalm 92 verse 13 the bible says those that are those that be planted in the house of the lord shall flourish in the courts of god those that be planted in the house of the lord shall flourish in the courts of the lord you see i have seen so many people moving from one place to another worshiping from one place to another my brothers my sister that is not called planting you are just navigating from one place to another. You are not planted. You no know, sampling one place of worship to another. I'm not saying that you should not go to a place to worship God. But if you are not rooted, if there's no place that you are planted in, there is no way you cannot benefit. You cannot get the benefit of being flourishing in the cause of God. So you need to be planted. You need to be rooted. It is only when you get rooted in the house of the Lord, that is when you can, that is the only time you can begin to do something in the house of God. Because David was planted in God's house, we can see that in the house of the Lord, he was not idle. And the next, this will lead me to the next point. I want to talk about the life of David. David was a dweller in the house of God. David was a seeker of God. David was someone that is desirous of God. He was someone that was planted in the house of the Lord. And the next point I want to say is that, David, you must also work in the house of God. He must be a worker. He must not be a spectator. You know, when you're reading about David, he was contributing, he was working in the house of God. Um, Many psalmists, when you're reading the beginning, some people refer to him as the chief uh, music director. You know, some people say that uh, he was a songwriter in the house of God. He was a director of music. You can see on many incidents where even Saul, when he was soloing, he was he played, he used to play guitar, music, and then he, there was a restoration in the life of Saul. People were blessed in the course of his administration. So David was not idle in the house of the Lord. He was a worker. He was a worker. He was, he was a songwriter. He was a music writer. He was a music person. He was into the house of the Lord. He was not just idle. He was not a spectator, but he was a worker. Brethren, for all to dwell in the house of God, we must have a focus. We must learn not to be a spectator, but working. What are you working? What is your work in the house of God? You cannot work when you are not planted. If you keep rambling, going from one place to another, there's no way you'll find opportunity to work. So you need to be planted. You need to be desirous. You need to seek him. You need to decide within you that you will dwell in the house of God. I pray that that will be a portion in the name of Jesus. I pray that that will be our mindset in the name of Jesus. So, one thing again that we need to do, if God is our dwelling place, if we want to make God our dwelling place, we must also decide to build. You must be a builder. You must be a builder in his house. In the house of God, you must be a builder. I want to read the book of um, First Chronicles 22, verse 14. First Chronicles 22, verse 14. That's we know that David was uh, uh, has a desire not just to worship in temporary place of worship that he has then, but he wants to have a permanent place of worship for his God. In fact, he wanted to build it, but unfortunately for him, God he was refrained from building because he has so much blood in his hand. In a book of in that passage. I was uh, book of First Chronicles twenty two verse fourteen. I just want to read an instance there. First Chronicles twenty two verse fourteen. David says he was talking to his son uh, Solomon. In my affliction or in my trouble, I have provided for the house of the Lord one hundred talents of gold, one million talents of silver and bronze and iron, without weight 
for it is in abundance and timbers and stones have I prepared that you may do, that you may also add to it. He was talking to Solomon. Yes, it is my intention. If not that God has refrained me from building everything needed for the building of the house of God, I have made it available. Is this here? And he began to mention some of the items that were there. 1,000 talents of gold, 1,000 talents of silver. My background is in figures. I can't I like figures. And sometimes when we are reading the Bible, we need to understand some the, the meaning because I try to see what is the value of this thing that David provided for the house of God. And that led me to start conversing. I started searching what is a talent? How, what is the worth of a talent? One thousand a talent a, a tone a talent when I was reading during the conversion I found out that a one thousand talents equals three thousand seven hundred and five tons of gold in our own metric these days. One thousand talents equals to three thousand seven hundred and five tons of gold, and I went to search how much is the worth of one ton of a gold. As of 2019, it was 46.5 million US dollars. One ton of gold was 46.5 million US dollars. And, but it wasn't one ton that he provided. Equivalent of 1,000 talents is 3,775 tons of gold. And that equals to $175.537 billion. So David provided the worth of gold that he provided for the house of God was worth $175.537 billion, US dollars, brethren. That is the worth of the gold that he provided for the house of the Lord. Not just the gold. I, I converted also the tons of silver that he provided. As of the 2019 metric, a stone of silver is worth $550,000. A $550,000 US dollars, that is silver is not as valuable as gold. But when you converted it, the, worth, the, the equivalence of 1 million talents of silver is equal to 7,750 tons of silver. And that will give you 20.7 billion US dollars. So in my little calculation, I didn't include the woods, the timbers that he mentioned. This is equivalent to 196 billion US dollars. This is just the money, the equivalent of today, if we had to convert some of the items that David provided for the house of God. Almost a quarter of a trillion US dollars. What a man. Can you see? He, he, that, that is why he said in Psalm 27 verse 4, one thing I desire of the Lord, this I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord <laughs> all the days of my life and be, be the beauty. Brethren, the servant God is not, it's not something that is very, very boring. It's beautiful. Is because he has tested it. That is why he said, test and see that the Lord is good. What is your desire, brethren? What are you longing for? Have you decided like David? He said that he would dwell. Where is your dwelling place? Are you a visitor or a guest in the house of the Lord? For David, he refused to accept to be a visitor but he said that he's going to be rest God says it's going to be his own residence. He's going to be his own residence. And because it's not just he's going to be his own residence, he said that he is so desirous of it. He is so desirous of it. And he will always seek to be in his presence. He will always seek to be in his presence. And not only seeking to be in his presence, he wanted to be, he wanted to make a mark. He noticed that for you to live in God's heart, you can, if you're not a visitor, you must be planted. He was planted in the house of God. No wonder we saw him flourishing. No wonder we saw his name 
was being mentioned, Jesus Christ even came through the root of Jesse. So you can see the, 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 the way that his name has been entered for life. I pray as we begin to make this decision, the Lord will continue to be our good shepherd in the mighty name of Jesus. There is help that comes from God's house. It is only when you do this, that is when you can come back to his house. Psalm 20 verse two, Psalm 20 verse two says, may the Lord send you help from his sanctuary. There is help, help also comes from the sanctuary. It comes from the sanctuary. Many people in the Bible, when they run to God, they go to the sanctuary, they receive help. A good example of someone that received help was Hannah. She went to Shiloh. She went to the house of God. She went to the presence of the Lord. She poured out her heart and she received help. It is my prayer. As you make the Lord your dwelling place, as you begin to seek after him, as you begin to desire after him, as you are planted and working for him and build for him, the Lord will send you help from sanctuary in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Brethren, this psalm has changed my perspective whenever I'm reading Psalm 23. David was with many people when we learned that he wrote this psalm. He was with many people, captives, many people, the, some people that are outcasts, many people that were warring with him. But in the midst of all these people, he, when he was writing this book, he did not say, the Lord is our shepherd. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. It is a personal decision. It is a personal race. It's not something that is being run family-wise, church-wise, community-wise. It is a personal decision. The Lord is my shepherd. Is the Lord your shepherd? Are you the Lord's sheep? What is your decision? Are you, are you, have you resolved like David that you would dwell in the presence of God, in the house of the Lord, all the days of your life? If this is your decision, then the Lord, the good shepherd, the blessing that goes with the Lord being your good shepherd will be yours in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will send help from sanctuary to you in the name of Jesus. You will flourish in the cause of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Our heavenly father, we thank you. We thank you because you are the Lord, our good shepherd. I thank you for the life of David. He lived an exemplary life, a life of personal conviction of deciding to dwell in your presence, in your house, not just momentarily, but all the days of his life. I pray, O oh Lord my God, as my brother, as my sister, decides to dwell, decide to desire after you, decide to seek after you, decide, O oh Lord, Father, to be planted in you and to build for your kingdom. Father, I pray, let them flourish in your court in the name of Jesus. Send help from the sanctuary. Father, this is our prayer and expectation. Is there any man, any woman, oh Lord, Father, that has not met the Lord, their sheep? Father, by the virtue of this word, as they cry unto you today, please accept them and let the blessing of Good Shepherd be theirs in the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing us, oh Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody.